Welcome to True Crime Case Race, and tonight we're going to be talking about the case of a woman named uh, Katie Smith and Sarah Brady. It's a very unique story. I've known about this story for a really long time. Uh, it happened back in 2005. Um, what are you drinking? I am having a Bud Light Lime. What are you having, Bud? I am having a screwdriver. Very heavy on the vodka. Um. Yeah. So this this case is old. It's over fifteen years old. Yeah. Uh, if you if you Google this, she was on Oprah. I mean, it was obviously a big deal back in the day. Um, I, first, I first found out about this case because it was on the show called I Survived, which I'm a huge fan of. But like, this case is just so intriguing. It's so wild that this is the shit that like nightmares. It's literally nightmare fuel. It's yeah. It's really if you important. well, seriously, like the the part, and we'll get to it, like where she realizes it's not a, like the situation she's in. It's literally something like out of a horror movie. Oh, um, so let's do a little uh, little context here. So Sarah Brady. Yep. Was and there's woman. some really confusing names here. So yeah. Sarah Brady yes. was well is well at the time she was nine months pregnant, living in Kentucky. Yep. And she received a call from a woman claiming to be named Sarah Brody that was also pregnant and claiming that some packages had been sent to her house for her because of their name mix-ups. Um, right, like they were, um, Sarah Brady had a, had a baby registry with, I believe it was Toys R Us. And yep. so there was a woman, her name was Katie Smith. Well, let's, well, let's, yeah, we'll get there. But she, th this woman claimed to be named Sarah Brody. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she goes to the person's house and gets the stuff off her registry, which I don't know what you were thinking when you heard about this, but my first thought was like, okay, this person that's messing with her, how would she know? Like, let's say she would have just called her and said, oh, I had these packages sent to me. And there was none like, well, this chick did research, like pulled up her registry, found her items. First off, I think that wedding registries like the knot or whatever and baby registries are cringe. And I think they're fucking weird and that you, you should not use them. In fact, if my spouse wanted to use one, I would tell them, no, we're going to buy our own gifts and we don't really care like what other people get us is off topic. But here's why, dude. I've heard so many fucked up stories, this one included about people like commenting weird shit on people's like the not post things. I believe you had a friend that had some shit like that happen to them about them, like talking shit about the groom, you know, you hear all these. Oh my God. I forgot about that. Until yeah. right now. Because right, it's I'm such an invasion of privacy. Like you can, it's such a weird, easy way to stalk people. Like looking up their wedding registries, looking up their pregnancy stuff. Like, it's going to show the address people? that they want yeah. it shipped to. Why would you Good. ever put that shit? I, this is 2005. So Facebook was like just starting to be a thing. MySpace was a big thing back then, but still it's to me, it's stupid. And I we're going to have to, we're going to have to talk about that actually off air because I've totally forgot about oh, yeah. the person well, you're talking about. But yeah. Um, yeah. So, and to keep in mind, I'm sorry, keep in mind, like this is 2005. So right. you think about the shit you could do nowadays. Like this is oh. like the early, we're going to call this like the early ish era of the internet. Like, yes, it's been around for a while, but like social media and things like that, it just started to become a thing. Yeah. 2005 was like when the internet, I believe truly like YouTube was invented in nine or I'm sorry, 2005. So yep. that's, that's when things really started to rock and roll. So this Sarah Brady goes over to the alleged Sarah Brody's gets this gift, which was off a of Toys R Us registry. And like, this is where this starts to get weird is their first interaction went normal. She gave her the gift. She's like, oh, yep, this was my gift. Someone must have got it for me. And she leaves. But they didn't know who got it for her because they claimed that it was like an airmail or, or what the fuck. I don't know. I don't know what it was called back then. It was uh, basically you couldn't figure out who it was from, but they had like paperwork that went with it. So like she was like, hey, I lost the paperwork for this, but like we'll we'll figure out who it came from eventually. But there were yeah. that Sarah Brady picked up. Yeah, and I'm not gonna call the alleged Sarah Brody smart, <laughs> but she definitely did her homework. So so on Sarah, this whole situation. Sarah Brady was 26 
and the alleged the the woman who went by Sarah Brody was 22. So there is okay. a maturity difference there. 100%. Yeah, and she was claiming to be nine months pregnant and overdue. The Sarah Brody was right. Um, so then after she gets the first package, she goes I think home. Sarah Brady actually was overdue. She was five days overdue. Sarah Brady was actually overdue. Okay. Sarah, Which Sarah, I find they were both well, they both claimed to be nine months pregnant. Sarah yes, Brady yes. Was Sarah Brody was not. This is also a bit of a strange thing because again, maybe her fiance, Sarah Brody's fiance. I'm sorry, Sarah Brady. See, this gets a little confusing. <laughs> Sarah Brady's fiance let I'm surprised he let her go somewhere now this is kind of just the age-old thing of like we trust these people we don't think they're bad uh you know especially in 2005 2006 you don't hear as much about this shit you know so sarah brody calls sarah brady say hey i got another package they end up talking on the phone for like an hour and she's thinking like i might have just met a real friend you know i might have been somebody that i can get to know so what too probably right yeah, good point. Well, I mean, because they're probably like same grade, and that's pretty cool, yep, right? Rare. Yep. Because I think it was a small town in Kentucky that they both lived in. So, yeah, it was. Um, I I've got it right here. It was. Um, it was in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Yeah. So what happened next? Why don't you Why don't you lead in the, to that? So time? that afternoon, Sarah Brody came to get another package in the mail and called Sarah Brady. This time they spoke on the on the phone for about an hour and Sarah Brady just kind of thought it was a little weird, but it was like, hey, I'm just chalking it up to the fact that this one is just a lonely pregnant woman. And she had decided to come pick up the package at 9 a.m. the next morning. Well, she went to go pick up the package the next morning and Sarah Brody kind of invited her in to go look for and asked her for help looking for information about like, you know, the paperwork. She was like, shit, I know I've got these you know, the, the paperwork here of like who this stuff is from, why don't you come in and help me take a look for it? And Sarah Brady, who has done a few interviews, but kind of has fallen off the face of the earth. Like I've looked, I try to look for her on Facebook and stuff, cannot find her anywhere. She did have a book called Saving Grace, which I, I probably would like to read. Um, was it was basically like, hey, yeah, I'm going to come in, whatever. We'll, we'll, um, we'll look for the paperwork. And as they're looking around, Sarah Brady just got like a weird feeling and she ended up actually looking at the woman's like dresser or nightstand and saw a, um, what is that called? Asthma inhaler inhaler. inhaler. And it said Katie Smith, not Sarah Brody. And she said, even before that, like the girl, the alleged Sarah Brody asked her to come into her bedroom. And she thought that was kind of strange, which is crazy too, because if she doesn't go in the bedroom, she doesn't see this inhaler. Right. Which, you know, and we kind of hinted at this in the beginning, like that's like something out of a, a horror movie. Oh. That's like, oh, we just I just realized this person is not who they say they are. Why are they hiding who they are? I yeah, I literally can't even imagine it, dude. I would freak out, dude. I would freak out. I think it's yeah. such a strange situation. And, you know, so basically Sarah Brody ended up attacking Sarah Brady. Well, it was Katie Smith who attacked Sarah Brady. And yes. Well, she went to give her a hug. This is weird. She asked her if she could give her a hug when she left, and she didn't want to give her a hug, but she gave her a hug. And then Katie Smith like started squeezing her really tight and then pulled out a knife. Right. So then she knocked the knife out of her hand. She said they fought for like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes, yeah. Um, and then she ended up stabbing Sarah Brody, stabbed Katie Smith. These names are really confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and she ended up dying, correct? Yeah, she died. Yeah, she stabbed her and she died. And, um, you know, I've got, I don't have mixed feelings about it. I think, I think Sarah Brady has mixed feelings. She's got to live with that. Yep. You know, her daughter's now, what, 15, 16, and also has to just hear these stories about it. And it's like, it's really overwhelming. And, um, this has happened too. This is like this is a thing that they call them like tomb raiders or some shit. Yeah, womb raiders. Womb yeah, raiders. which is yeah. insane. And like this has yeah. happened. I remember a case. I happening. saw another thing about it today. Actually, that's how I came up with this this content because I was watching a different case about it. But Sarah Brady said that you know 
she felt like an instinct, like something's wrong, you know, and you're into yeah. it and you got to follow that. And she said the hair on her arms just stood up and that's fucking freaky, dude. Dude. Uh, I just thought of this in real time and we'll have to do some research on this because we could do a podcast about this and sorry for the uh, extra little bit here, listeners, but I'm 90% sure that there is a case that has come out in the last couple of years where there was a girl who was like 18, 19, 20. Now she found out that her alleged mom killed her real mom and cut her out of her stomach while she was a lo- like a baby. I'm well, 90% sure this is a real story. There's shit like that. That's happened. Yeah. I but mean, then she crazy. found out that her mom is not her mom. That's well, crazy. There, well, there's a lot of like hospital kidnappings. That right. Real recently too. And with all this like genetic stuff, like, um, ancestry.com and shit it's becoming more and more um prevalent you know where you're finding these kids that have been missing for fucking 18 years because they applied for college and they're like your social security numbers invalid right yeah they're they're hidden in plain sight this whole time they don't know you know they don't know there's like a taylor lauder movie about that but um yeah you know this case gets even weirder Here's the most fucked up part, and shame on Katie Smith's parents and her family. They're the ones that came back and tried to convince the detectives that Sarah Brady wanted to sell her baby to Katie Smith for oh, five thousand dollars. I, I did not know that. Yeah. So the the uh, Katie Smith is fucked in the head. Obviously, she had mental problems. There's no excuse. Well, her family obviously has mental problems and you guys can go fuck yourselves. And that's what we're here to do is call you out and say you're fucking losers <laughs> and roast you because you're fucking idiots. They claim that Sarah Brady went to Katie Smith's house to sell the baby to do an in-home birth and then freaked out and killed her. That is so ludicrous. Selling your baby for $5,000 via C-section at some fucking woman's house who's not even a fucking doctor. Get the right. fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Well, and those people I mean, should be in prison. And also, how do you? Okay, so like that story, as ludicrous as it sounds, could make sense if there wasn't evidence that your daughter was faking she yeah. was pregnant. Like, well, she, you know what I'm she saying? Faked, she had faked at least three pregnancies prior, according to detectives. Right. Her first one that she she faked was in eighth grade, and I'm assuming it's because she didn't want some fucking boy to dump her. <laughs> You know, but the Sarah or the fucking Katie Smith woman, she was large. And it also she also said uh, Sarah Brady, not to I didn't mean to interrupt you, Todd, but she actually said before she got attacked that she looked at Katie Smith and there was this like look of evil. Like she just knew that this person was like not it was right after she figured out that she wasn't Sarah Brady. She said she looked at her and she just had like a blank expression, like just nothing was there. Sad. Which obviously this person's a total, you know, psychopath. That's obvious. Right. Um, you know, lying about who they are, attacking her. Um, well, was there ever any debate about it being self-defense or was it straightforward? I mean, it was no, obviously. I, I think it was pretty fucking straightforward. That's a pretty right. straightforward thing. I mean, um, the, the, the most fucked up part of this whole thing and it's traumatizing probably for the actual Sarah Brady is that they made her do a six hour, um, lie detector test to figure out if this is actually what happened and it's just crazy to me that they made her go through that and i really feel for this woman and if she's watching which she's probably not but she could i mean she could youtube herself or right herself, and we just right. want to be the best because we realize that you went through a really fucked up thing and i don't think that i don't think that this woman gets the credit she deserves I truly believe that. No, I I mean, Sarah Brady, I mean, Sarah Brady is a survivor. I think that's the thing people got to, you know, because a lot of times this goes the other way. Like I said about that case, you know, I think there was another case a couple years ago in Kentucky, one of those areas where a lady was caught, you know, trying to cut a live baby out of the moon. The mother was already dead. I mean, this shit, it happens. I don't know what fucking rabbit like rabbit holes. What insane path these people need to go down where they don't think adoption well, or, here's the craziest thing, dude. Yeah, like, where do you, how do you get to that point? That's what, that's what I'm getting Smith at. was 22 years old. Unattractive, right. unattractive, but 22 years old. So in what mindset are you thinking that you can't get pregnant? Most people right. don't realize that they can't get pregnant until they're like, 
really trying. I don't know if she had a husband or whatnot. I haven't done the research on that. Guilty as charged. Doesn't like, sound like it from what you know, we're what we're hearing. How many people do we know that got pregnant by 22? Four. You know, like if I'm trying yeah. to have a family right now, then I might have concerns. I'm, you know, in my 30s. You know, then you might start having some concerns saying, well, maybe I can't get pregnant. Maybe, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you're 22 and you're having trouble getting a, a baby, there's so many options, dude. In vitro. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if in vitro was a thing back then. It probably was. Probably well, you get, a, you get a sperm donor. You, can, you know, you could get well, adoption. I mean, there's a lot of. Foster care is literally like free. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> adoption via state is like free. So like right. to fucking cut some newborn out of some woman's that to, like womb is just literally insane to me. I don't know. I'm really happy we covered this because it's a, it's a, it's a crime that was committed that's been on my mind for so long. And I'm really happy that we were able to really talk about this and I hope our viewers enjoy it. Um, Speaking of losers, Todd, just a quick yeah. transition because we probably should Quick talk about this just because we've done two episodes. We kind of had our final thing on the Brian Laundry Gavitito case. Do you want to talk right. about that at all? Um, sure. Basically, it came out that he shot himself. Uh, to this day, we're recording this the Sunday after Thanksgiving. He has still not been named the primary suspect, which is crazy. Um, and unfortunately for this case, that was, you know, the biggest case and a massive case. It looks like it's just going to go down a murder suicide that got dragged out. Um <sighs> over the course of weeks and weeks. And, you know, it's really sad because the parents aren't going to get the justice, you know, and I think that's an insane highlight or not highlight. I'm sorry. That's an insane hindsight example. Cause what is people can act like, Oh, I want to see Brian laundry go through court and get the guilty verdict and go to prison. But do you really want to see that kid who killed your daughter in front of you every day for weeks on end or do you want him just to know he's dead i know that sounds really morbid uh, i think that they wanted him to spend every fucking because he's such an outdoors guy and loved the outdoors they wanted to see him in a fucking concrete you know metal cell right I, I and that, could, that could be now, now there's no closure you know there's no reason why like what happened i mean at least brian laundry if he went to prison he could say you know even 15 years from now say i fucked up we got in a fight blah 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 you know, and not to turn this into the Gabby Petito Brian Laundry thing again, but well, I know. just thought we we should summarize it because we've talked about it twice, yeah. and that that came uh, out like a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it is sad. Um, I really don't know what else to say. I mean, the 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 unfortunate thing is the closure here is so blunt and done with that it's not probably what they're looking for, right? Oh, it's it's just like, oh, yep, he did this, killed himself. No. It's over. The one thing I'll say is the police in Tampa or wherever the fuck they're from, um, should have never let him out, out of their states. And they did, and that's on that's on them. Do you think the parents, do you think, since this case is pretty much like, because what's going to happen, right, is in the next couple of weeks, probably they're going to, you know, say he was the one who killed her, because they haven't said that yet. And they're mm -hmm. going to say, well, we can't prosecute him or charge him or go after him because he's dead. Do you think they're going to go up for the parents or do you think they're kind of just going to say this is over? No, I think they're going to say it's over. Um, I think the parents are going to live with, I think the parents are, are psychopaths. I do. Um, I think the parents probably want to divorce each other every day because they have disagreements about what actually happened and what's going on, but they're not able to divorce each other. And you know why? Because they're the only people that know what each other are going through. And that's a really fucked up spot to be in. Yeah. You know, and, and, they'll they'll they, they know what they did they they yeah. know that they knew more and they got to live with that and i'm not saying that they're in the right or the wrong for it i'm not a parent so i can't say what i do for my child but um when you got 300 Mar americans on the lookout for a murderer that's that happens to be your son um you're on the wrong side of you're on the wrong side of things yeah yeah i mean the only thing i will say is you know that we know of is him getting away from the tampa police didn't really lead anything else like there's not other people he might have killed all it did was string out the investigation right because right. by the time he got home that gabby had already been killed so it's not like him slipping away changed the order of operations if you will I mean, it, it, it changed the fact that he he killed himself well, yeah, that's true. But you he know, could have he, he could have done that in the house. He could have done that in the house too, though. That's 
True. I didn't really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Stupid, stupid me. <laughs> you know, I'm sure he, that he gun, did. somebody had it or somebody gave it to him. Well, you that'll know, that'll be interesting to figure out whose gun that was. Um, yeah. So I don't have anything else to say. Pretty short to the, uh, pretty short and sweet. Um, yeah, but a good episode, I, I feel. Yeah. If you're curious to know more, kind of see just what her side of the story, you know, look at her, look up Sarah Brady because she literally was on Oprah and, uh, yeah, and I survived and uh, we hope we wish her the best. Hope she's doing well. Um, I guess if you guys want to see more stuff and want to see us keep doing this, we really enjoy doing this. Please uh, like subscribe and comment your, uh, your opinions about this case and any other case. Yeah, we really are. You know, I, I made the mistake in the last episode of saying what we're going to talk about next. And I apologize because I don't like to, we don't like to say what we're going to talk about next because stories Kyle, come. Yeah, like Gabby Petito kind of came out of nowhere. The Kyle Rittenhouse trial, I mean, came the kind way, of out of nowhere. Lee Maxwell is coming up, but we're not sure how juicy that's going to be. Probably. Yeah. Me. What I can say is we're definitely going to be talking about Unsolved Mysteries because it's a super interesting topic. And I know you and I, Todd, talked about this when we watched this show. Much like how the internet community kind of helped the Gabby Petito case. I do wonder with some of these unsolved mysteries, if like the Netflix series oh. or if podcast being big could actually help them. I think oh, absolutely bring. I think highlighting. Yep. Yeah, I think highlighting them um, is a really good idea. So we're definitely going to be talking about those. I guess I should have just messed up saying we. I messed up by saying we're going to talk about them next. That's my bad. Um, yeah. So anyway, for Todd, I'm John. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking us out, and uh, see you guys next time.